Ah, so aggravating. You know what I'm talking about. We all been there, probably used the wrong tool for the job, did more damage than good. Well, no worries. You don't have to be that guy because today on Tech Garage, there's a tool for that. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, we get a ton of feedback throughout the year saying, man, that was a cool tool. What did you use? Or how did you make that job look so easy? Well, we dedicated a whole show just for you guys. Rock Auto hooked us up with all kinds of specialty tools, and yes, there's a tool for that. I'm starting out with suspension. Man, there's a ton of tools for suspension to make your life easier. Let's go ahead and look at a few of them. The first one we'll look at right here, well, this is a ball joint press. Rock Auto offers this and if you ever tried to press one of these ball joints out you know you have to grind the rivets out the whole nine yards. This press here there's really no way to get it out without it so you want to have that. Now I know a ton of you can relate to this. You got the shock absorbers right up top here. You go ahead you try to spin this nut off it spins the whole apparatus inside the shock absorber or this is all rounded off. Guess what? There's a tool for that. Check it out. You actually have a nut that goes down on there and this piece right here goes through the middle and holds the top of the strut spindle that goes through. Look at that, not even touching it. So you can go down, now you can take that nut off, hold this one, and never strip out that nut or ruin your shock absorber. Another one right here, you have a tie rod end, you wanna separate that, well, that could be a problem. So I got a tie rod puller right here. You're gonna use that right there so you don't damage it. And or you can get these pickle forks, they come in all different shapes and sizes, beat it in there and go ahead and separate that, pop it out of there. This is good for a lot of the joints on the steering system. It works really, really well. Now also, when it comes to the pitman arm on a steering system, the pitman arm's located right here. Now the pitman arm has a pitman arm puller. You're not gonna get that off as well. It's a press fit, so you just slip that on, put it underneath there, man, you crank on that thing, you're gonna pop that pitman arm off with no problem. There's a tool for that. Now we'll talk a little bit about tires down here. You want to mess with the tire, you want to do a tread depth gauge, figure out if your tires are safe. I have two of them, a digital one or a regular one. Just pop it down there, read the number. You can tell how much tread you have on your tires. Speaking of tires, right here on your studs on your wheels right here, there's actually a stud puller that you can pull the stud back in when it breaks from the back of the rotor. You can put that back in there and pull it. You won't do any damage and get it in there. Believe it or not, there's a tool for that. Let's go down here a little bit, man. There's all kinds of cool tools. This right here is a rack and pinion, and there's a nut in here. Sometimes it's hard to get to. They have a huge extension that goes over the end to get to it to take it off. Coil springs, you gotta take them out. You need to compress them. They have a coil spring compressor. You can just put it on here, squeeze it down, compress it, use the safeties, lock it in, you're good. One more, everybody's tried to pry a power steering puller off a pump. Man, all kinds of damage occurs. Just get you a puller set like this here, pop it right on there, boom, put it in there, pull it, use it to press it back on. Never damage a power steering pump. There's a lot of suspension tools, but there's even more. Man, we've all been there. We have a bearing we need to install. We run around the yard looking for a pipe just the right size. Don't do that. Just go ahead and get the right adapter set right here from rockauto.com. We have all kinds. So just go ahead and get the right set. Make sure it matches up and install it the correct way. As far as bearings go, that's all you need to do. Moving on, let's move over to our puller set. Harmonic balance or pullers, got to have those. Don't go into the job with a pry bar, big, long, flathead screwdrivers. You're going to mess something up. Speaking of installing stuff correctly, go ahead and get the appropriate seal installer kit. You don't want to run around your yard looking for pipes and pieces of wood to try to get on there just so it goes in just right and you still end up with it cocked to the right or left. Just get the right tool for the job. You saw John earlier try to pry that thing out with a pry bar and stuff. You don't want to do that. You're going to end up gouging the inside of your axle housing. All you have to do is get the right tool. It's easy as one, two, three. Now, when it comes to brakes, how do you know your brakes are bad? Well, rockauto.com helps us out here. We've got these tools. We're able to put 
the edge of these up to our brakes. If you're in the green zone, that means you have enough friction material and you're in good shape. If you get down into the yellow zone, as far as the thickness goes, you're going to need to watch out and change your brakes pretty soon. If you, my friend, are in the red zone, then you are in big, big trouble and you should not go anywhere. You should replace your brakes immediately. Now, when it comes to replacing your brakes, of course, you want to take the calipers off. And when you do that, guess what? We've got this adapter set from rockauto.com. You've got Torx bits here and you've got also Allen keys as well. So whatever your make or model of brake, you'll be able to get it off using this. Once you get it off, now you've seen people use bungee cords to hang the calipers on there because you don't want to hang it from the brake line. You'll do all kinds of damage. Again, bungee cords do work, but rockauto.com helps you out here. They have this special tool. You're able to hang up your calipers from somewhere on the frame or the suspension parts and you won't do any damage to your brake lines. When it comes time to put in your new brake pads, we've seen people do all kinds of crazy things. C-clamps, big pry bars. You could get injured. You could do some damage. You don't want to do that. Instead, use this tool from rockauto.com. You slide it in between the brake calipers. You ratchet it. It pushes outward. It compresses that piston, gives you the space to put in the new brake pads. Here's another great tool we've got from rockauto.com. This is a vacuum pump. You can use it when you're bleeding your brake system after you've installed everything. And you can also use this as a gauge when you're testing your brake booster. Now, if your emergency brake is integrated into your brake caliper, none of that's going to work. Instead, you're going to need this. This is a special kit from rockauto.com. We've seen people use all kinds of crazy tools. You can use a big Phillips screwdriver. That's going to slip. That's not going to work for you. A lot of people use needle nose pliers to get in here. Not a good idea either. Instead, this kit comes with little adapters. You find the right one that works with your brake and you're able to wind that in. That compresses the piston and opens it up so you can slide in your brake pads there. Now, that is a mechanical emergency brake. If you have an electrical one, you're going to need a way to retract that caliper. And you can't do it mechanically, so you need to do it through a computer. Now, this little tool plugs into your OBD2 port right under your steering wheel. You find the make of your car, enter it, and it opens that for you. And you're able to slide in your new brake pads. We have a lot more cool tools coming up next on Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Steel rubber products, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Thank you to all of our sponsors and to you, the viewer, for tuning in to Tech Garage, brought to you by rockauto.com. Well, when it comes to engine performance, you guessed it, there's a ton of specialty tools. Let's start right here. You've seen us use a spark tester quite a bit. You know, it's a simple tool, but why do we use it? Well, it's a predetermined gap here, and the coil actually has to put up a little bit of pressure, a little bit of electrical to jump that gap. Using a screwdriver is not a good idea. That's why we use a spark tester. Fuel systems, same thing. You've seen us use quite a bit this fuel pressure gauge. RockAuto.com has this whole set here for all the different adapters. You put it on there, check your fuel pressure, make sure it's all right. We use that quite a bit here in Tech Garage. Now, when it comes to taking off lines, man, I know you guys pried, tugged, tried to figure out how to take off lines. This kit has everything from fuel lines to heater hoses to different air conditioning lines. All the cool quick disconnects that we end up breaking trying to pry them off. You're going to wish you had that set. Now we talk about fuel injection, the Noid lights. When we're checking injector pulses, you actually want to use one of these little Noid lights. These little Noid lights have a little bit of resistance in there and they don't mess with the system. I put it in there, spark, it pulses, you know your computer's working. And don't forget about Old Faithful. Good old stethoscope inexpensive stethoscope we can put this on check and see if the injectors are ticking check wheel bearings check all kinds of bearings even tensioner pulleys speaking of tensioner pulleys they're over there checking some belts and pulleys with some more specialty tools John, this is a belt removal tool we saw a few episodes ago. It enables you to get down deep in the engine and pry that belt off wherever you need to do it. This came to us in a kit from rockauto.com, and it includes, of course, the tool itself and all the adapters you need to get down into any brand of engine. And how do you know you need to change your belt in the first place? Well, we got a little tool from rockauto.com as well. Let's take a look at some belts here. This is a brand new belt, and you can see that the grooves are not 
very deep. So this one is still good to go and it's a little counterintuitive. It's, it's different from a tire when it comes to belts. The grooves actually get deeper when the belt wears out. So here's one that's a little bit worn and this is a little bit sloppy in there, but it's not too bad. Here's an example of one that's really worn out though. Take a look at the uh, little notches go down into the grooves all the way there and it is time to change that belt. And this handy little tool came as part of a kit for MockAuto.com, Josh. That's right, in the same kit, before you install your new belt, what you want to do is make sure that the pulleys are all in alignment. And this kit actually comes with a laser alignment tool. It's pretty awesome. So you can put it on there, make sure everything is lined up. And after you do that, you install your belt, but then before you get your car all started, make sure the tension's still good on there as well. This kit actually comes with a tensioner tool. And you can get simple things from rockauto.com as well, including something like this water bottle. Why do I have this water bottle? Well, if you want to see what's wrong with your belt, you start the engine up and you can spray water right on your friend Josh. No, you spray water, <laughs> spray water right on the belt. And if the squeal starts to get louder, that means you have a tension issue. If the squeal goes away, it's an alignment issue. And then you'll know what to do next. Well, still to come on Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com, we answer your email questions in Garage Ed. Hey, welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. You know, it's been a phenomenal garage. Ed, we went through everything that has to do with brakes, but we're a show for the people. So along the way, we've gotten a bunch of emails. Dave, you got a few right here. Let's help out some of our fans. You got it. Michael in Manhattan says, my brakes squeal even when I've just had them replaced. Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, that's huge. I mean, we went through all the brakes, but we really didn't talk about a break-in procedure. And you can look at it on the graphic right here. Really what you should do is a few aggressive stops, maybe five, 10 aggressive stops from 40 miles down to 10 miles an hour. But the key is don't stop and hold on the brake pedal. You don't want that resin to embed into those rotors. So what you need to do is either keep moving or shift it into neutral. Then what do you do? Well, you go with a little bit of easier stops, maybe 30 miles an hour down to about five, but once again, keep the car moving. Then what you want to do is end up by cruising. Just go on, get those rotors cool, let it cool, and that will bake the resin into the pads. You won't get that judder, you won't have a problem, you won't get that squeal. Break-in is important. I love it, the word of the day, judder. Yeah, right, very good. Chris from Miami, Florida writes in. Chris says, when I'm sitting at a red light, my brake pedal slowly drops to the floor. What's going on there? That's a good one, Chris. Yeah, I love Miami. It's probably, probably a lot of stop and go down there in South Beach. No doubt, no <laughs> doubt. You're sitting there and it's going to the floor. Well, we gotta go all the way back to that master cylinder, man. We talked about that primary and secondary piston in there. Well, what's going on is you have those seals. So it may be bleeding by internally, and if it's bleeding by internally, you're not gonna see any external leak, but the pedal's slowly gonna go to the floor. Also, you wanna look externally. Just make sure there's no fluid leaking somewhere. It's obviously going down. The number one cause is either air in the system or that master cylinder. Check them both out. You may want to bleed it. If it keeps happening, you don't see any external leaks. Chris, go ahead and replace that master cylinder. Very nice. Todd in Phoenix. My pedal is low when I push on it, but if I pump it up a couple of times, it seems to be fine. Yeah, What's up that, with that? Yeah, that's common. That's a good one, Todd. I mean, that happens to a lot. The disc drum combination, the discs in the front of the car as well, they're self-adjusting. So if you do a brake job and they're self-adjusting, it's really not going to affect pedal height. So that pedal's still going to sink down a lot. The key is it's coming back on the second or third. So you probably don't have air in the system. I would look at those rear brakes. If they're drum brakes, you want to go back there and you want to adjust it. Every time, Dave, we do a brake job at Tech Garage, we always just take the rear drums off, take a look back there, service it, clean them, make sure they're all good. You did it on the show, make sure everything's good adjust those drums up real good, make sure they're tight. That's gonna bring the pedal up every single time. You'd be amazed what little checks like that. It's just the ounce of prevention that uh, equals a pound of cure. So you just do a little bit of work in advance and things won't go wrong down the road. Yeah, and that's what we did throughout the whole segment. I mean, every one of those, make sure you pull it off, make sure your pads are thick, make sure your shoes are thick, make sure everything looks really good and you should be good to go. Dude, you just passed the garage. I uh, passed Tech Garage? Yeah, oh, it's right back there. Well, guess what? Oh, no. That means we're going to have to go back. We got oh, brake power, but do we have engine power? I think so. That's plenty of power. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> well done. Hey, you guys, stick around. There's plenty more Tech Garage as soon as the smoke clears and hopefully everything else. We'll be right back. 
Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is brought to you by Magic Creeper, the most versatile creeper ever. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radios since 1977. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Well, break is over, and we're sure glad you stopped by. Oh, guys, please do not let Dave write the script. If you don't know by now, this master technician tech tip is all about the brake system. Buckle up, we got a ton of tips and I'm gonna start with a brake inspection. So what you wanna do is you basically wanna get your vehicle up. If you're in the driveway, make sure it's safe, use jack stands. We have the liberty of a beautiful lift, so I got it up in the air, got the wheel off. I wanna take a look at everything that's going on in the brake system. Starting up here with the brake line. Just follow it down, make sure there's no leaks, make sure there's flexibility, make sure that it's supple, it's not caving in anywhere. And then you come over to the caliper, just make sure the slides are moving. Basically, a good visual inspection will tell you a lot. And then you could take it one step further. Look at the rotor, check for any glazing, any rusty, any bad spots on the rotor. Heck, while you're here, just go ahead and take a look at the suspension and see if you have any problems with that as well. Then what you can do is you can do a measurement called lateral runout. Now, lateral runout's pretty cool. We're actually checking to see if the rotor's warped. Lateral runout would be this way. And what I have is a dial indicator hooked up to it, and you don't want any more than three thousandths lateral runout. So if you had a hub rotor like this that wasn't sitting there, you'd have to put the lug nuts on and tighten it up, but ours actually have these little secure nuts on here that hold it to the hub, so it's not gonna flop around. Then what I'm gonna do is come over and spin it around. And as I spin it around, you can see the dial indicator. It's moving a little bit, but not too much. Now, if you had lateral run out, lateral run out after a while hits those pads back and forth. It really doesn't cause pedal pulsation because the caliper's moving. But what it creates is dis thickness variation, DTV. And we can come right here on the table and I can show you what that's all about. So as that rotor goes around, it keeps hitting in that one spot on the actual pads and it starts to eat it in and out. So you would take a brake micrometer and simply just come around in eight or 10 spots all the way around the rotor. And what you're looking for is less than five ten thousandths difference of in and out. Now think about that. You can have lateral run out and not have any in or out and you can have the in and out and not have any lateral run out. Now it's that in and out that causes that pedal pulsation. The pads hit it, pump back and forth, pumps the fluid all the way back up to the master cylinder, and that's what you feel on that pedal. And that's a very common occurrence because the vehicles are getting lighter and the materials for building these are getting lighter as well, and a lot of times they'll start to warp. How do you solve that? Well, you either get some new rotors or you have them turned. Make sure your hubs are clean and use proper torque specifications on your lug nuts. Hitting it with the gun brr, 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 is not a good idea. That's going to warp the rotor every single time. Let's change our attention to our pads. We can look at pads. They come in all different shapes and sizes as well. But we have some new pads here. We have some used pads and some worn out pads. And you can use this pad lining gauge right here. This is pretty cool. You've got green, yellow, and red, just like you would think. The green ones are good. So if I come to the side of the pad like this, you can see these brand new pads are right there on the full green. You have a couple other ones that are green that start to step it down. Now I have this pad that's a little bit worn out, not too bad, but then I would go over here, let's get one of these yellow ones, and let's put a yellow one on there. And you can see there, that it's right about on the yellow one. Well, that means you're starting to get worn out. It's probably time to keep an eye on those brake pads. And then I have one here. Well, this one really doesn't even need to be measured. This one here is totally worn out, but if you used a little red gauge or the pad fell in that red section, it's time to replace the pads. Now, what do you do? I gotta replace all the pads. I gotta replace all the rotors. Man, there's fully metallic, semi-metallic, organic. There's drilled and slotted rotors, heavy duty rotors. Sometimes pairing them up or deciding what you want to use, it's a nightmare, but it doesn't have to be. I'm sure Tom and Dave, well, they have the solutions. Well, John, the match set is the perfect thing you're going to want when you're putting in brakes. Why is it better, Tom, to have the match set? Well, when you're replacing the rotors, you always want to re replace the pads anyway. So why not get pads that the manufacturer has determined are less likely to be noisy, less likely to produce dust, um, optimally uh, bed in with the rotor so it, it just makes sense and you, and you get all the parts you need in, in in with one part number so there's less surprises 
less chance you'll have to run to the parts store and get more stuff. So you save time and you know you're getting it done right, but what if you just need, say, the pads? Well, we have a huge selection of pads, too, from just numerous manufacturers. Um, a, a great deal we have is if you're, let's say you have a fleet vehicle and you're replacing your pads every three months or something, and you really are really interested in cost, we have um, wholesaler closeouts that are often name brand pads that a competitor has sold off because they're changing the line they're carrying or they're, they're closing a store or something. And they're often half of, of what our reliably low prices are, which are much lower, lower than a conventional brick and mortar store. So yeah, a fantastic deal. So you can save money, you can save time, you can get it done right if you go to rockauto.com. Well, it was a great day here at Tech Garage and we sure hope that you learned something and we made your life easier. As a matter of fact, that's our goal for the entire season. We sure hope you guys enjoyed it. I know we did. We want to thank our sponsors, rockauto.com, Chipola College for the incredible facility, and our incredible crew, man. We've been doing this since 2015. This is season seven. Most important, you the viewers. We can't do Tech Garage without you, nor we don't want to do it without you. This is the end of the season, but no worries. You can check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all that cool social media stuff. Thanks for watching and thank you for the guitar. Woo. See you next season. See ya. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was ranked recently as one of the top three community colleges in the United States. <laughs>